Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're checking out Bandai's new line of dinosaur model kits, the Planosaurus line. So we've got the first two here today. We've got the Tyrannosaurus and the Triceratops, and I believe there's two more on the way at the moment. I'm quite interested in this line. I'm a dinosaur fan. I'm obviously a plastic model fan, so I'm interested to check this line out. It seems to be like it's going to be quite similar to the Woolly Mammoth kit that they came out with before, but this is really going to be quite a simple model kit and really kind of more geared towards children for educational purposes, not necessarily for like a plastic model enthusiast. So I don't really expect too much out of these and I'm actually planning on taking these home and building them with my kids so that they can uh, kind of enjoy it and then I can kind of see firsthand, you know, like how enjoyable they are like for children. But anyway, for now, let's go ahead and check out the boxes and the contents and everything and then we'll see how the kits go. All right, starting off with the Tyrannosaurus here, we've got a really cool illustration there on the front as well as a photograph of the kit. And so you can see it's going to have like a skeleton on the inside and then these pieces that go around on it on the outside. And just to read this little bit here on the front that which is in Japanese and in English, it says creation leads to discoveries. Start assembling these dinosaurs from their skeletons. Yes. All right, so definitely seems like it's meant to be educational. Here on the side, you can see this is number 01 in the line up and this is on a lot of bandai kits but i mean it just kind of definitely makes sense to have this on here that you don't need glue you don't need tools you don't need paint for this again as for a model kit that's meant for children important to have that on there and then kind of showing how you build the skeleton and then build it up like so around here on this side it says learn about the skeleton right there you have a little display base for this as well which looks like it says uh, tyrannosaurus there in japanese on the side the skeleton does have some articulation, which means that it's going to be a little bit different from the skeleton that we saw in the imaginary skeleton line, which was a fixed pose skeleton. This one is articulated, so you can actually change the pose of that, which is pretty cool. And then with all the outer pieces on there, I gotta say, it look, definitely looks like a child's toy. But interestingly, it looks like you have option parts to make it feathered if you want, so you can have it either unfeathered or feathered depending on which style you prefer, whatever theory that you believe in, I guess, for the Tyrannosaurus currently. And over here on this side, talking about the instruction manual, which I expect is gonna be similar to the construction manual that we've seen, like I said, with the Woolly Mammoth kit, which had a lot of different information and stuff in it. Looks like we are gonna have some stickers in there as well, and there's a QR code for more information. All right, let's go ahead and pop it open. There's those stickers right away, which look like they're going to be decal stickers. An interesting design here for the construction manual as it's kind of like the size and shape of like a pamphlet that you would get in like a museum or something like that, basically. Right here on the front, you got some basic facts and some more information there about the Tyrannosaurus in Japanese and in English. Very small print though. If this is meant for kids and educational purposes, that's really, really small font. I guess like in Japanese, it's a little bit better, but the English is really, really tiny. Around here on the back is just again showing the model and some basic information there with the feather type and the normal type and then you have a kind of fun illustration down here again you can see uh, this is meant for kids it's got the fossilized hand there showing of course the Tyrannosaurus's signature two-fingered hand it's kind of a whole little thing about that and it's all in Japanese and in English which is awesome and it would appear that that's kind of the extent of what is in the manual as far as like educational stuff there's a few more little parts there like you can see one part right there about its biting force the rest of the color side of the manual is all just going to be construction of the kit on the other side of the manual is all in black and white where we've got a parts list and there are a couple more spots in here with some information stuff about the sharp teeth it says right there down here about the features of the bones of the foot so kind of like as you're building the part of the skeleton or like the skull then there's information about the teeth as you're building the legs and then there's information about the feet so that's really kind of cool how they have that set up i like that and here's a look at those stickers which are just going to be sticker decals it looks like for maybe some of the skin features or feather features around on it these are definitely for those like blue feathers that you saw on the arm and this pink one probably for inside the mouth this tyrannosaurus sticker there for the label on the base you can use that so they've got that in japanese and in english there as well in white there and a runner is going to be in this kind of bone off white color there for all the skeletons so it looks to be at least at first glance that the runners are in order so like you'll go a runner and then b runner and then c runner i'm not sure if that will hold up for the entirety of the construction but it seems that way so here on the b runner we're getting into some of the flesh parts there around on there's parts for the head the tail the legs some parts there for the feet 
Runner B2 is in this light tan color for some of the coloring on the underside of the Tyrannosaur. Runner C is back to that main brown color for the rest of the pieces there for the outside and then the base plate right there, which looks like it doesn't have anything molded into that with the name. So you'll just have the name on there just using the sticker. And then Runner D here from what I can tell looks to be like these are the feather option parts. So yeah, it looks like the runners are gonna be used in order for the most part, which is pretty cool and definitely makes it again easier for kids, which is nice. And on that note, it does look like these parts are gonna be quite easy to just pop off the runner without the use of tools and not really damaging the part all that much. Up next then, let's take a look at the Triceratops box and contents as well before we take a look at how the kits look once they're all built up. But again, really cool box art here on the front with the feathers quite prominent there on this Triceratops. But otherwise, the box is gonna be quite similar in that you have a photograph of the kit over here showing some of the skeleton and the outer pieces. On this side of the box, you can see this is 02 in the line, the same box art and same styling here repeated. On the bottom of the box, there's a look at the fully built skeleton. There on the base talking about how it's all just snap fit you don't need glue it just uh, attaches down to the base you have articulation built into the skeleton it all really looks quite nice as a skeleton I must say and then once you have it built up here's how it's gonna look once all the exterior pieces are added onto the skeleton and it looks like with this one it's got the rows of teeth and feathers have been recreated but it doesn't appear that it has any optional pieces for this that you only are able to build it up like that with those feathers on it. I don't think there's an unfeathered option for this one. But on the other side there, again, just talking about the information included in the instruction manual, and then another shot there of the kit and including some stickers there again for the feathered bits. Go ahead and open up this one here. Once again, there's those stickers right on the top. We'll get to the runners in just a second. Let's go ahead and take a look here at the manual. And the manual for this one going to be similar, just like the Tyrannosaurus one. You've got some information there, basic information in Japanese and in English about the Triceratops. Photographs down here of it with the skeleton and in the dinosaur build like that. Around here on the backside, another photograph of the kit and then your little comic right there, which is talking about the Triceratops' frill, interestingly. so. There's all about that. It's like theories as to kind of what the frill was used for. Inside, we've got one section right there that says the way they walked. So a little bit about kind of how the dinosaur uh, uses locomotion. And then did they have feathers? Question mark right there at the very end. On the inside, during the midst of the skeleton construction, you have three horns right there talking about the actual horn structures of the Triceratops, the secrets of the teeth, they're talking about the teeth of the Triceratops. And that's about it for the instruction manual. Let's check out the runners. Before we do that, a look here at the sticker sheet, which has stickers. I'm guessing those are for the eyes, like the tongue inside the mouth, and then for the feathers. And the name, in this case, for the base is in black rather than white. Runner A here, once again, is our bone off-white color for all the skeleton parts, including this piece that's already fallen off the runner right there. Runners B1 and B2 here. B1 being in this light tan color there, looks like mostly for the horns. B2 being in our dark green color, which is the main color of the skin. And then we've got runners C1 and C2. Runner C2 is some more of the skin colors there in dark green. Runner C1 is some more of that light tan, including our base plate part right there. And that's it. All right, guys, so we're back from our dinosaur dig, and here are the two kits all built up. These were a lot of fun to put together. I actually did hardly any of the work building these. I just let my kids do it all entirely by themselves, uh, who are five and seven, and they were able to figure it out just fine. So totally kid-friendly mo friendly model kits now, tested and approved. All I really did on this was a little bit of nub cleanup because the parts snapped off the runner just fine, and they were able to do it without any tools. Uh, but there was like a little bit of nub marks here and there, and just to make the kits look a little bit prettier, just a little bit nicer. Uh, I just cut off a little bit of the nubs just around on the kit where they were slightly noticeable, but I mean, otherwise it was very minimal. And then I did place the eye stickers on just because you know I wanted to make sure that those were as accurate as possible, as close to accurate as possible for the placement of the eye stickers. Otherwise, yeah, my kids had a lot of fun putting these together. And throughout the construction process, we would stop at the information sections and my son would read and I would kind of help him with the more difficult words because he's seven. He didn't really have much trouble reading those sections and then that was interesting for them to kind of read read about the different parts of the dinosaurs as we were going along through building the kits, so they had a lot of fun. 
And as much fun as the kits are, and I think they are really just great for kids, the stickers really didn't work very well. I mean, putting the stickers here on the base is fine on a flat surface, but trying to even just put the eye stickers on, it was very apparent that the stickers that fit over the feathered sections of both kits were just really not gonna work. I did try to put the sticker in here on the tongue as well, and you can kind of get it to form around there, but the way that these stickers are, and you can see the one on the eye, like it looks fine, so long as you can't like really see the reflection of that sticker, because it's not really fitting in around the shape, is that these stickers are kind of like that that softer rubber which makes them less prone to getting damaged I guess but the bad side of that is that they're quite difficult to get like worked around details of parts and get to be like stuck down they're gonna peel off very soon I imagine and they're just not really that sticky especially for in and around like small detailed areas like how we need them to fit around like the feathered sections of some of these parts but anyway let's just go ahead and focus here on the Tyrannosaurus just for a moment now the way this is stuck onto the base is using this this little connection piece right there and as you can see you can stick that onto any one of these different spots and that uh, attachment piece just plugs right into the bottom of the foot on either foot no matter which one you may prefer and you have a little bit more articulation of it in skeleton form but in the normal form the mouth does open you can adjust the angle of the head and that's just on a ball joint so kind of any direction you want at the base of the neck you also have a ball joint that will give you a little bit of articulation but not really all that much you can kind of turn that a little bit the arms are just on a single little ball joint in there and you can kind of move those around and it's basically the same here for the legs because of the way that these parts are molded you can't really move anything other than just where the leg is attached up in there which is on a ball joint so you can change the angle of that the rotation forward and back the same thing here for the tail the base of the tail is on a ball joint and then you have another hinge of a little bit of articulation there but again it's limited with it being in its normal form to switch between the normal form and the skeleton form it kind of helps to disassemble the kit and it's pretty easy to do the connection of these parts is not that strong so it's made to be fairly easily uh, assembled and disassembled as in like taking these parts on and off so it helps to break it down into sections to remove these parts the arms the legs the head of the neck the torso to remove the parts off of here once you have everything off and then have the kit reassembled here is how it's going to look it is really nicely detailed and you also have a, a better articulation of the skeleton as you, it frees up some of those joints here in the head the mouth can still open like that you have that ball joint at the base of the skull ball joint at the base of the neck which is going to give you still not that much but a little bit of articulation there the forearms are still just on a single ball joint we can move those around same thing here at the hip connection but then you also have a knee bend here and an ankle bend of the foot right there the tail is on a ball joint at the base and then that hinge in the middle of the tail like so and for attaching the skeleton onto the base and we have a different connection piece for that which is going to plug in here at the back of the foot and I suppose you could display something like this but of course that's incorrect it would really be interesting to see these kits and maybe the imaginary skeleton kits as well featured on the YouTube channel your dinosaurs are wrong shout out to that awesome YouTube channel if you guys are interested in dinosaurs it's a really good one there we go that's maybe a little better but I do have to say I do love the fact that there is more articulation built into this so that you can adjust the pose of it that's something that was kind of it felt a bit missing from the imaginary skeleton version although I think with that one it was nice that they were able to recreate the skeleton more accurately because you know obviously having these joints in here as a plastic model is not totally accurate to the skeleton so that it was kind of a trade-off there you don't have the articulation but you have it more accurate a skeleton so once it's reassembled with all the feather parts here is how it's going to look so you have a different part there for the top of the head the neck the torso parts and the tail there and then you also have new parts here for the arms yeah there's stickers to make those uh, colored but i think you're just going to have a really really hard time getting those stickers on if you really want the, those feathers to be colored i would recommend just getting a little bit of paint you don't even need to paint the entire kit if you don't feel like it uh, but i mean just throwing a little bit of paint on those feathered sections i think should be enough then maybe throwing like a bit of just like a panel line wash kind of over the whole thing just to kind of uh, bring out all the details sharpen all the details and then some matte or maybe like a semi-gloss top coat i think would look pretty cool and i think you'd have a really nice look for this all right then moving on to the triceratops this doesn't have any attachment piece to attach onto the base and obviously it's a four-legged animal so you don't need that for support although it would kind of have been nice to have some sort of connection piece just so that it's not just kind of sliding off the base if you do want to move it or something but the base plate is you know again essentially the same you have the stickers on there i went and put uh, english on one side japanese on the other and without having any optional pieces for this you 
you only have this uh, option build here with some of the plumage there on the top and some really nice scale details all around this. Again, I put the stickers on the eyes, but I didn't even bother putting the sticker on the tongue on this one. This has a sticker for the tongue and then stickers for the feathers up here, but I didn't really realize how widespread the forearms of the Triceratops, I guess, are meant to be, according to this model anyway. I assume it's pretty accurate to, you know, the current most acceptable theory as towards the like a gate of the Triceratops. But anyway, the head is on a ball joint there at the base, and then you have a ball joint at the base of the neck as well, but you can't really get any much of any articulation out of that. The mouth is able to open up there as well, and you have some really nice teeth detail up inside there, as is kind of discussed in the manual, which again was quite interesting to read about the teeth of those. I find that these parts here for like the beak, the front horn, and the top horns kind of come off a little bit easily there, so you may want to glue those on. If you're planning on keeping this in like the full form, not in the skeleton form, you may want to just add a little bit of glue just to make sure that those don't come off and get lost, especially if you're gonna be giving these to your kids to play with. But the forearms are on a ball joint at the base, and then you you do have one point of articulation here kind of at the elbow. The back legs or the hind legs are on a ball joint there at the base and then these also have a little bit of articulation. So in contrast to the Tyrannosaurus, you do have a little bit of more articulation in the limbs uh, in its like uh, full form. But here at the tail, it's just a single joint as the Triceratops tail is kind of quite short and simple compared to the Tyrannosaurus where it doesn't need the tail for counterbalancing quite as much as the Tyrannosaurus does. So it's gonna be a quite short, simple tail anyway. But just like with the Tyrannosaurus, pretty easy to disassemble, kind of helps to kind of break it down into sections and you can kind of it's just a matter of just pulling off all of these pieces and they're designed in a way that makes it pretty simple and easy to do that. Once you have all the parts off there, again, really nicely detailed skeleton here. Now you're gonna have the joints which are gonna make it again, you know, less accurate, but it does look really cool. Our range of movement here of the head is greatly increased and that's just on a ball joint so you can turn that left to right. The mouth still opens like so at the base of the neck. The articulation of the legs though is gonna be basically the same in that you have a ball joint at the top and then a joint here in the elbow. You're gonna get more range of movement out of that here without the skin parts on. And here at the hip, hip movement, knee movement there, no joint there in the ankle at all, so you can just move that a little bit. And then the tail as well is just on a hinge there like that. But yeah, really cool and very nicely detailed skeletons. So it can be kind of difficult when you have kits like this where you have multiple different ways of displaying them, either in their skeleton form or in their full form with all the skin and everything attached on them. You kind of want to have both. And so, I mean, depending on how much of a fan you are of the kits, you may want to get two of them just to have one displayed in its skeleton form. And I think that could make for a cool display. You kind of have them side by side, one as the skeleton and one as the uh, fully normal form, I guess. But yeah, I think generally these are about exactly what I expected at the beginning going in is that, you know, as model kits, if you're into just model kits as like a model kit builder, enthusiast, a modeler, these aren't really going to give you a whole lot to do. I think you can definitely have fun with them, but you know, they're definitely not going to be as nice as like the imaginary skeleton model kits or some other different model kits. These are definitely much more meant for kids, I feel like. So, you know, if you're a parent and you're into building models and maybe your kids are interested in building models as well, and maybe they're interested in dinosaurs because of course they're kids and what kid doesn't like dinosaurs. I think these are really great to get and to sit down and build with your kids or, you know, let them build and you can kind of help them along the way. So really great model kits for that. And it's really good to see that Bandai is doing more kits like that. Some of these more kind of educational kits I think are really great um, that, you know, teachers can use them in the classroom and also parents can use them with their kids as well, just as a kind of thing to do that's fun and educational. And as a parent, you know that anytime you can disguise something educational as fun, it's always a good kind of win-win situation. So that's going to be about it here for the first two entries in the Planosaurus line. I'll definitely want to check out the next two as well. And I'm not sure how long the line will really continue too much more after that. We'll just have to wait and see, but I'm hopeful. I'm, I'm thinking that it's going to be a pretty fun one. If you guys have any other further questions or comments, of course, feel free to let me know down in the comment section below. And if you're wanting to check out these kits for yourself, the link will be down in the video description to USA Gundam store where you guys can order these kits and everything else there from Bandai as well. But as always, guys, thank you so much for checking out the video today. I hope that was helpful for you all, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.